Last week I showed you guys my step-by-step -step process for setting up and recording a stop motion video in the studio. So today I'm going to show you my process for how I edit that using Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're new to the channel, my name is Stephanie and this is going to be a series all about how to create, edit, and export stop motion videos so that you can start delivering high quality animated content to your clients. Now, before we get into this video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you love behind the scenes content or are interested in stop motion animation or product photography. And if you missed last week's video on setting up and recording the stop motion, I will link that video for you down below. Now, if this is your first time either using Adobe Premiere or just creating a stop motion video in general, I really want this to be a simplified version of how to create and edit a stop motion video. So this is gonna be super simplified, hopefully something that you can come back to over and over as you're learning the software and as you're learning how to create your own stop motion videos. So here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. The first thing that we're going to want to do from the homepage here is just go to new project. And then it's going to pull up our new project screen here where we can name it and decide where we want to store the project file. So we're just going to name this, we'll call it protein bar stop motion. And then I'm okay with this going to my desktop. If you want to change the location, go ahead and browse for a new one and then just click okay. Okay, so now we can see we have our blank timeline right here. Over here is where we're going to import our files. And then this screen here is where we're going to be able to see what the video is looking like as we're moving along. The first thing that we're going to want to do here is go ahead and create a new sequence. So you can do that by clicking on this little icon down here for new item. It just looks like a folded piece of paper. Go to sequence. And then it's going to bring up the new sequence screen here. So you'll want to give your sequence a name of your choosing. We'll just call this protein bar for now. And then down here, I do have some presets, which we can get into in another video, but since you may not already have these set up, you're gonna to go to the settings tab. I'm going to leave my frames per second as is right now because we're just working with still images. And then you can change your frame size depending on where you're going to be using this stop motion animation. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do 1080 by 1920, which is Instagram's preferred aspect ratio currently for reels. But if you wanted this to be in a square format, for example, you could do 1080 by 1080 or whichever aspect ratio works for the platform that you're gonna be using this on. So that's really all I do for my sequence settings and then go ahead and click okay. So just to make sure we have it, let's recap that one more time real quick. You're going to click this little piece of paper, go to sequence. It's going to bring up your sequence settings. You will then name your sequence, whatever you would like. Head over to the settings tab, change your aspect ratio to whatever you need it to be, dep depending on which platform you're going to share it on, and then click OK. Super simple. So next, what we're gonna want to do is just import our footage. So I've got mine saved to my desktop right here. I'm just gonna highlight all of my files, click and drag them into this area here. And I can get rid of this. So you can see we have all of our files here. This one with the green icon is the sequence that we created that all of this is going to be housed in. And then you will also see that you have a tab here with the sequence name right here. So if you were to create multiple sequences where you wanted to drag in different pieces of content or images, you would have a few different tabs up here across this area with each sequence name. So right now we're just on stop motion and we've got all the images that we just imported. The next thing we want to do is drag our media right over here to the timeline so that we can start working with it. So one thing that I want you to keep in mind when you're dragging images or clips over to the timeline is the order in which you click to highlight them is the order that it's going to drop it over here. So for example, if I just click, say I have this bottom one selected, which is the last image in our video, and then I scroll to the top, I'm holding down the shift key, clicking the top one to highlight them all. If I drop them in, let me show you what happens here. Just drag this over.
And I'll show you guys how to do this when we have everything in the right order. But as you can see here, look at what happened. Because I clicked on the bottom image first, if you look in our timeline here, this is actually the last image from our stop motion animation. So it basically put everything into our timeline backwards. I know that because the bar is missing from our stop motion animation and because the glass is empty. We want it to be full and the bar should still be there in the beginning. So I'm gonna delete all of this. And so what you wanna do is make sure that you're clicking these in the order that you want it to go. So I'm gonna click the first one first, drag it down, hold shift, click to highlight all of them. And then I come back up, grab the first one, drop them all in scooch this down a bit and then if you want to adjust these panels so that you can actually see previews of what the images look like here just click right here and drag upwards and then you can start to see those previews loading up so now what I'm gonna do is hit control or command a on my keyboard to highlight all of the images at the same time right click and then we're gonna scroll down and click here where it says scale to frame size because before I do that, if you can see here, obviously this is very zoomed in. It's not fitting our 1080 by 1920 aspect ratio. So the reason we want to do that is so that we can scale it in. So come on back down here, click scale to frame size, and then it's the perfect size. Before I do anything else, we want to go ahead and render these files. Otherwise, things get a little bit jumpy while you're trying to play it back. So to do that, we're just going to go up here to sequence and then click render in to out. And then it's going to pop up this rendering box here with a percentage of how far along it is, creating previews for all of your images. And then you can see this bar here. It used to be yellow. It is now green which is indicating that everything is rendered. So if you were to click the play button, it's not going to glitch out. It's just going to play straight through. So as we can see, the video is playing quite rapidly right now. So the next thing that we want to do is adjust the speed and duration so that each image within the sequence is playing for the amount of time that we want it to. So there's two things happening in this video that we want to adjust. We have the movement of the straw and then we have the hand reaching in to grab the protein bar. So let's just go ahead and start with the straw. What I'm going to do here, this is where it stops moving. So I'm gonna to go to the last frame where the straw is moving. I'm going to click and drag and highlight all of the clips where the straw is moving. You can tell that they're all highlighted by the white boxes around each image. So then let's right click and then we're gonna nest these together so that we can manipulate them as a group instead of individually. So we're just gonna call this straw, click OK. And now what we can do is if we right click, we can adjust the speed and duration that the straw is moving within the stop motion. So it's currently at a speed of 100%. That was a little quick for me, so I'd like to slow that down. So let's just start it at 50 and see how we like that. Click 50 and then make sure that you check this box that says ripple edit shifting trailing clips. That's just going to mean that if you were to extend or shorten a portion of the video, it's going to move any following clips or images to adjust for that. It's not gonna leave any gaps in your video. So make sure that you check this box and then click okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and render this again by going to sequence, render into out, and then we can go from there. Let's go ahead and play this through now and see how the straw looks at 50%. Still a little rapid fire for me. Let's go back. We're going to right click it again, scroll down, go to speed slash duration. And this time, let's change it to 25 and see how we like that. And usually once you've checked this box once, it will remain checked while you're working on the current project. So that's good. And then all you need to do is click OK. We're going to render it again. And it's ready to go. So let's drag it back to the beginning and see how it looks. Mm, we're so close. I'm going to make this a little bit quicker. 25 is just a little bit too slow. Let's bump it up to uh, 35. 
render again. You guys are gonna get used to this process real quick. Yeah, that looks great. That's a good speed for the straw to be moving. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can adjust the speed and duration of your images or clips. And I wanna make sure that I show you guys both ways that I like to use. So for the straw one, we remember we grouped all of the images together and then we nested them. We right clicked, clicked on nest, and then we named it so that we could adjust the speed anywhere from 100%. We went down to 35%. There's another method that I like to use where you can group the images together instead of nesting them. And then instead of the speed percentage, you can adjust the duration of each image within the grouping. So let me show you guys how I do that. So super quick recap here. We nested the straw clips by right clicking and we scrolled down to nest and then we named it. And then we adjusted the percentage of the speed by right clicking and going to speed duration and changing our percentage here. The other way that we can adjust, I'm going to go ahead and scroll over to the grabbing of the bar and you can see it starts right here. So you can either edit the speed and duration of each individual image by clicking on the image and then right clicking, scrolling down and going to speed duration. Or if you want to edit them all at the same time, and this is only if you want each image to last for the same amount of time you're going to highlight them and then just group them together. So let's highlight, scroll down, and we're gonna click group. So you can see the difference here is if you click here, we still have them all separated by the white boxes, but now when you click, it's not highlighting just the individual image that you've clicked on, it's highlighting them as a group because when we go in to adjust the speed and duration, it's going to adjust it for all of the clips within that group. Whereas if we go back over to the nested sequence, you can see there's one big white box around this indicating that we nested it instead. So for our group of bar grabbing images, let's go ahead and we've clicked it. Now we're right clicking, going down to speed duration. And let's just start by changing this to five frames here. Ripple is still checked, click okay. And now you can see these yellow bars up top are indicating that these have not rendered yet. So we're going to go ahead and render those again. There we go. Let's go back to the beginning and just play it through and see how the timing is looking for everything. Pretty happy with that. I think we can go just a touch quicker on the bar grab and this is all personal preference as well so don't feel like you have to select a certain value for your videos everything is just depending on the feel and look that you're going for for your videos so i'm going to speed this up just a bit we're going to change this to four frames instead of five click ok render that bad boy once more And now when this is playing through, you might start to find it a little irritating to continue to click this play button. So if you click this up here, this is going to loop the playback. So once I have my files rendered, I like to loop it just so that once I hit play, I can automatically watch it a few times through. So let's click that and then hit play. And see how it started over there. It's just gonna keep looping for as long as we let it and then we'll click the stop button once we're happy with it. One final little tip that I'd like to show you, just in case you do decide that you want to manipulate some of these images individually, let's go ahead and right click and we can ungroup these if we change our mind about the timing of any of these. Quick tip that I just thought of, I actually just learned how to do this a few days ago, so I thought it would be very rude of me not to share keyboard shortcut for speed and duration, because you're gonna find that you're adjusting the speed and duration at least 1,052 times for each of your videos. So Control or Command R on your keyboard. Go ahead and click on the clip that you want to adjust the speed or duration for, and I'm on a PC, so I'm going to press Control R and check it out. Speed duration pops right up. That's definitely gonna come in handy for you. And so now we are ready to export our video. So there's a couple ways we can do that. We can either 
click within the timeline here and press Command or Control M on our keyboard, or you can head up here to File, hover over Export, and then click Media. And that's gonna take us to this screen where we can adjust any settings that we need to before we export the final file. So for the format, I usually leave this at H.264. That's just your general MP4 file formatting. And then if you come down here next to output name, if you hover over the name of your sequence here, it's gonna show you where it's going. If you wanna change the path where that's going to be exported to, just click on the hyperlink here, and then you can browse and change the location that you're gonna to export to. And then scrolling through here, these are just some settings if you want to enhance the quality of your video because most of the animations that I create are being used on social media platforms. I really don't need super large, high quality files. The default settings work for what I need. So I'm just gonna leave those as is today. And then all you have to do from there is click export. It's gonna encode it here on this screen, give you some progress. And then it's gonna show you at the bottom here, your video was exported successfully and it is going to show you the path. Now that we have exported, here is our final video. So that's really all there is to it guys. All you need to do is drop your images into Adobe Premiere and then from there it's just a matter of playing around with the speed and duration until you get the type of feel for the video that you're looking for. But if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure that you stick around for the rest of this stop motion series, which at the end, of course, I will link everything below. Next week, I wanna take you guys into the studio and start showing you some concepts and new ideas that you can try for your own videos. I know it can be kind of difficult to drum up new ideas for how you want your products and props to interact within the scenes that you set. So. Stick around for those, gonna give you some fresh new ideas and I will see you guys in the next video.